Well, as we grapple with the aftermath of that collapse on I-95 in the city's Taconi neighborhood, local engineers are dissecting what happened from every single angle. Alicia's here now, and you spoke with a structural engineering expert at Drexel who says there is already a big takeaway from what happened here. And this has a lot to do with the open steel and an apparent lack of fireproofing. Dr. Abi Agayeri says this span collapsed because of the exact spot where the fire erupted underneath the bridge. The thought that came to my mind is that it's a freak accident. The question was, should there have been fireproofing uh, provided for this bridge section, for this bridge section over this road? Dr. Agayeri says when a fire occurs on top of a bridge, the steel is protected by the concrete roadway. In this case, the steel underneath the bridge melted because it was exposed, as you can see from this picture from Google Maps, just before the incident. So to protect the beams, take a look here. He says if you apply something called intumescent paint, it would help. It's a fireproofing material, so it's expensive. But you can do that, you know, where you have the bridge crossing over a road. That would be my suggestion that uh, at least where the bridges cross, you know, uh, it's an overpass over an, you know, a road below. Uh, the the steel beams in that section of the of, of the bridge uh, should be coated with intumescent paint. So right now, there is no direct mandate to fireproof the steel girders underneath the bridges. As for how long this might take to repair, I did ask him. Dr. Aguirre says the 2022 bridge collapse in Pittsburgh took a year to rebuild. This smaller span, he says, shouldn't take nearly that long, which is what we kind of want to hear. Yeah, I think the one in Atlanta most recently was like 46 days or something. <sighs> they really, really sped it up. So we can, we can hope. hope. Yes, yeah. we can hope. And very interesting about the paint, too. Alicia, thank you.